Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020, regular business meeting of the East Bay Mud Board of Directors. Uh, due to COVID-19 and in accordance with the latest Alameda County Health Order and with the Governor's Executive Order N-2920, which suspends portions of the Brown Act, this meeting will be conducted remotely via Zoom. Um, in compliance with these orders, a physical location has not been provided for the meeting. These measures will only apply during the period in which state or local public health officials have imposed or recommended social distancing. Uh, the Finance and Administration Committee met this morning and will report out under item 15. Uh, all directors, including myself, are participating via Zoom. Via Zoom. Uh, will you please do roll call, Madam Secretary? Directors Coleman? Present. Katz? Present. Lenny? Present. McIntosh? Unmute, Lisa. Here. <laughs> Mellon? Present. Patterson? Present. President Young? I am here. Okay, um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America. America and to the and republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okie dokie. Um, that takes us to public. Oh, no, that takes us to whether there are any announcements from closed session. There are no announcements from closed session. Um, public comment. If members of the public wish to speak on an agenda or a non-agenda item, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Comments on non-agenda items will be heard at the beginning of the meeting. Comments on agenda items will be heard when the item is up for consideration. When prompted, please state your name affiliation, and if applicable, the topic. The secretary will call each speaker in the order received. Each speaker is then allotted three minutes to speak. However, I will have the discretion to amend this time uh, if we have a lot of people that want to speak. Uh, the secretary will keep track of time and inform each speaker when his or her time uh, has concluded. Um, with that, are there any uh, members of the public who wish to make public comment? Um, Madam Secretary, do we have any hands raised? President Young, there are no hands raised for public comment. Okay. Um, there's no one for public comment. We will move on to the consent calendar. We have uh, 12 items. Um, for consideration, are there any items uh, that board members wish to pull from consent for discussion? I would move the rem move the consent calendar. Second. Okay. Um, with that, uh, roll call, please. The consent calendar was moved by Director McIntosh and seconded by Director Patterson. Correct. Yes. yes. Roll call. Directors Coleman? Yes. Katz? Yes. Lenny? Yes. McIntosh? Yes. Mellon? Yes. Patterson? Yes. President Young? Yes. Okay. Um, moving right along then um, to uh, determination and discussion. Um, item 13. Um, to adopt a resolution supporting Proposition 15 um, will be presented by Marlene Dumaine. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a follow-on from the last board meeting where you, as a board, opted to support Proposition 15. What is before you now is the resolution that would officially express that support. And as a reminder, Proposition 15 is the split role property tax measure that would change the taxation measure for certain business and industrial properties. Um, is there a, a motion? So moved. 
second. Uh, Bill, were you trying to second first there? Yeah. Okay, Director Patterson, uh, moved by Director Mellon, seconded by Director Patterson. Is there any discussion on the item? I made my comments known last time, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, you didn't change your mind in the last two weeks? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, then I think uh, if there's no one that wishes to speak, then we will uh, move to a roll call vote on the item. Directors Coleman? No. Katz? Yes. Lenny? Yes. McIntosh? Yes. Mellon? Yes. Patterson? Yes. President Young? Yes. Okay. Um, that will um, take us to item 14, uh, the general manager's report. And the first um, piece of that is uh, uh, around the ad hoc, an ad hoc committee to on um, Los Vaqueros expansion. So Clifford, you want to yeah. introduce the item? And yeah. then I, yeah, then we'll have a presentation. Certainly, yeah. And as the board's aware, we're evaluating participation in Contra Costa War District's proposed expansion of Los Vaqueros Reservoir. Oh, hey, Clifford? Yes. You sound, you've got, there's a lot of ring feedback kind of thing going on on your mic. I'm adjusting mics, so uh, Risha's making some adjustments. Is this better? A little bit. Okay. Uh, so anyway, at the August 11th planning committee meeting, um, we shared the project partners are working on establishing a joint powers authority. Um, and we're recommending that the board appoint an ad hoc committee to advise staff in negotiations of the JPA agreement. Mike Tognolini, Director of Water and Natural Resources, has a short presentation. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a brief presentation uh, with a recommendation to form an ad hoc committee to guide the staff in the uh, development of a joint powers authority agreement uh, with partners for the Los Paris Reservoir Expansion Project. Uh, next slide. Uh, participating in the Los Paris Expansion would potentially be consistent with East Bay Mud's strategic plan in two areas. Uh, one would be the potential to uh, improve our long-term water supply. The second would be um, to provide uh, environmental benefits. Those environmental benefits include uh, both benefits to the McKellamy River because of the potential for gain share water that would be uh, allocated to the McKellamy if we were to um, generate a yield from the project. And secondly, there's a substantial um, uh, benefit of water supply to wildlife refuges in the Central Valley. Uh, next slide. The um, partnership right now consists of um, up to nine partner agencies that are listed here. Contra Costa Water District is, of course, leading the effort because they own the existing reservoir and have been considering the expansion. And you can see the other eight partners, mainly Bay Area Municipal Water Agencies. However, uh, San Luis Delta Mendota Water Authority is an irrigation authority and Grasslands Water District is a uh, manager of a wetlands area in the Central Valley. Uh, the project cost is approximately 942 million and uh, has received a grant from the California Water Commission under Prop 1 WISIP for approximately 50% of the capital costs. Uh, and there's a, an effort underway to also leverage federal funding, which could apply an additional 25% of cost for the project. Uh, East Bay Mud's share of the project uh, at the moment, um, assuming only the state uh, grant, would be 30,000 acre feet of storage for approximately $70 million. Uh, the process going forward is that the, the partners are, in the, are forming a joint powers authority and the most optimistic aggressive schedule would have that JPA uh, formation occurring this December. Following that JPA formation is an opportunity for each partner agency to negotiate with the JPA a service agreement. And that service agreement would provide most of the details around the amount of water and yield that would be provided, as well as uh, costs 
and um, long-term obligations. So for now, we're talking specifically about the formation of the Joint Power of Authority. All right, next slide. So as you can imagine, with uh, nine different entities uh, working uh, uh, from their own perspective and developing a JPA, there are many complex issues that arise. And we want to be sure that we have the boards, um, uh, that we know exactly where the board is coming from with respect to some of these issues that are currently being discussed and negotiated. Among them, who could be a director of the JPA? Should it be only a, an elected official? Could it be staff or could it be anyone that's appointed by a member agency? Uh, voting, whether it's super or simple majority, and that may depend on the type of of um, issue that's being covered. Uh, district veto rights, considering that East Bay Mud and Contra Costa Water District have uh, a number of their um, facilities involved in the project. Uh, we need to be able to protect uh, our ability to use our facilities for our own customers. So that's part of veto rights, as well as special voting provisions. Um, off ramps, and this is relates to the question of um, what information, how can we, uh, if an agency finds that they're not um, um, comfortable with where the, the uh, service level agreement is going, how can they get out of, of um, how can they back themselves out of the JPA once they've agreed to be a part of it? Payments, uh, and one question here is the ability to self-finance. I think the general concept is that the JPA would finance the bulk of the project, uh, but there may be individual entities including possibly East Bay Mud, that might want to consider self-financing. And then uh, lastly on this list, assurances. Um, any member, uh, member agency of the JPA wants to be assured that whatever they're contributing to the project is going to result in a reliable delivery of water back to that member. So those are all the types of issues that we're discussing as a part of the JPA. And next slide. So the staff recommendation for today is to form an ad hoc committee on formation of the JPA for Los Vaqueros Reservoir. It would be two or three uh, directors, East Bay Mud directors, and likely would meet in October. And depending on how the negotiations go, would meet additional times following that uh, to provide direction and uh, advise staff on negotiations. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, so, Mike, um, it's Director Young, one question, and then I uh, want to kick off the conversation. Um, so, this water, then you're so there's everything's basically settled. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> uh, so, this water, uh, seven, um, 30,000 acre feet, um, $70 million at the current cost share, that comes out to what? $2,300 an acre foot, something like that? Um, so that's... Um, that, am I doing the math right or wrong? That's per acre foot of storage. Of course, you fill and drain that storage multiple times over the years. So, Presumably. So, yeah, potentially. So the more often you use that facility, the lower the cost. Um, I think the... I don't have the actual unit cost handy, but um, the, the costs are in line or less than many of our other supplemental supply alternatives. Okay. Water transfers. Except water transfers. Yeah, water transfers would be the least expensive. Right. Okay. Um, so I would, um, uh, I think staff's recommendation is a good one. Um, do we have to, actually, Craig, Pony procedure, do we have to decide to set, uh, approve, setting up an ad hoc committee and then um, appointing members or can that can those two things be done in one fell swoop? Uh, you can do it in one one vote okay. to say okay. the, well, the motion I, is I to set like up to an ad hoc committee yeah. and then have a discussion about who will be on the committee and, and vote on that. Okay. Um, well, I would like to make a motion um, to approve the appointment of an ad hoc committee and to appoint myself, John Coleman, 
And um, it needs to be, I think the only options after that are um, Doug, uh, can be form of the planning committee, um, Doug or Lisa, I guess, or John, uh, Frank, um, somebody from the planning committee to the, uh, to the ad hoc committee. I'll pass. That's not on the finance committee. And I don't Somebody think there's any overlap right now. Frank. <laughs> yeah, I hear Frank say he passed. That's correct. So I, what I, I would, oh, thank you, Lisa. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so the motion is, the motion. okay. So is the motion clear, Risha? So, so it's to, to appoint an ad hoc committee and have that committee be myself, John Coleman and Lisa McIntosh. Correct. Okay. All right, roll call vote to appoint an ad hoc committee and the members be President Young, Director Coleman, and Director McIntosh. Director Coleman? Yes. Katz? Yes. Lenny? Yes. McIntosh? Yes. Mellon? Yes. Patterson? Yes. President Young? Yes. Thank you for that. Um, Are there, I, I mean, we didn't actually ask if there's any questions or discussion uh, from board <laughs> members on the item besides just going straight to the motion. I'm going to guess that if one of you had had one, you would have raised your hand. But I, I think it would be important to uh, review what the uh, process will be for reporting back to the full board, uh, whether uh, we will get memos or a verbal report uh, or uh, as appropriate closed session uh, reports. We, we, uh, I, I think I don't think that this item can be handled at all in closed session. I have to think it all is all open session uh, material, so um, it'll come back to the board as appropriate. Yeah, uh, we'll um, probably first bring it back to planning committee and then um, to the full board. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Alrighty. Uh, next up is our coronavirus update, and Mike Ambrose, Acting Director of Operations and Maintenance, will be making the presentation. You giving me control? So can you remove the um, cover? From the this? Perfect, yes. Okay. Mike, yeah. you can grab the bottom of the, so that they can see your face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, keep going. There you go. All right. Okay. Thank you. New system today, so breaking it in. All right. Good afternoon, members of the board. I'm going to give you a brief update on coronavirus, plus a little bit on wildfire and PSPS. It'll be a brief, uh, short presentation, but some good news, a bit of good news. Okay. You have seen this slide uh, two weeks ago when Dave Briggs made this presentation. This is just the, uh, the state's uh, format for reopening the economy with the, the different tiers, widespread being the, the worst tier and minimal being the best. Um, this is the way for each of the counties of the state to tell each of the counties what they can reopen. And it's based on new case rate per 100,000 and positive test rate. That's how they define the tiers. And those two both go together. Alameda and Contra Costa counties are in the highest tier, but there's been a change today. And I'll talk about that in the next, next slide. And actually, all of the counties that we operate in are uh, getting much better. Excuse me, Mike. Can you please pull the mic closer to your mouth? Is it this mic? Yes. Oh, I thought it was the... Uh, it's that one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is the current status as of 915. But if you look on the website, these numbers have all changed. So um, Alameda County has actually gone from widespread to substantial. And the numbers for Contra Costa and San Joaquin are actually down below to the point where if they stay in those levels, they will be substantial as well. Now, just as uh, a reminder, you have to hit both of those criteria for two consecutive weeks in order to progress to the lower tier. And the reason why this is important for us is that if we get into substantial for two consecutive weeks, 
then schools can open for in-person classes in some limited fashion. This shows the COVID-related leave for the district. You can see that we're, we're trending slightly down. Um, we're hoping, we're uh, optimistic that there's no, going to be no spike from the holiday weekend, the Labor Day holiday weekend, but we're on a, a good trend. I'm switching to air quality. You probably recall a couple of weeks ago we had a real poor visibility where it looked like it was the uh, dusk in the middle of the day. This picture shows uh, one of our job sites out in the back It looks uh, pretty dark. We had to break out our, our uh, spotlights to make sure that staff had uh, good visibility to complete their work. We also had a couple of days of poor air quality and that, that may return in, later in the week. So we've updated our response plans. We have um, N95 masks for those that uh, wish to use them. We have 4,500 masks in stock and a number of masks on back order. They are trickling in in bundles of about uh, 500. Um, so we, we're maintaining our stocking levels for N95s. We're also looking at reducing the intensity of the work, moving to better locations and deferring work where we can. Switching now to PSPS, uh, the wildfire season is going to be starting, or could be starting very soon. We have 40 pieces of equipment deployed. 31 of those are our rented generators, and we spent 147,000 to date for those. We have a PSPS exercise scheduled for the 23rd and 24th. We just want to make sure that we're ready. We've uh, incorporated the lessons learned from last year, and we'll be ready when, uh, when a PSPS does occur. In addition, we've updated our ability to monitor our system. We've created a, a screen in our um, SCADA system that will track the availability, availability of PG&E power at our pumping stations and the status of our portable pumps and generators at those facilities as well. So it gives us a better uh, overall view of the status of the system rather than looking up the status of each facility as we go. And that was the end, so I'll take any questions if you have them. Uh, questions from board members? No, I, yes, I have a question. It appears that um, PG&E may be in better shape this year on being able to detect when a PSPS is going to occur. And I know they set up micro grids, I guess it is. How does that impact our service area? You mean in specifically? Yes. Are, are there more of the microgrids in our service area which would enable the power to remain on in certain areas? And um, are they just in better shape than they were a year ago when we faced all this? So, so I, I think there's, there's a, a few um, parts to that one, Director Coleman. First, they, they have promised to try to keep them shorter and return power back sooner. We have been communicating with pg e to try to um, segregate or segment the, the, their network a little more to exclude some of our facilities. Um, but the reality is our major facilities are still on the PSPS list. Uh, we're still a little over 200 facilities. Um, but what we're counting on is the fact that PG&E is going to make them shorter and respond faster to bring back power. Uh, regardless, even if they didn't, we're prepared. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, um, Mike, is our um, our trial run also including testing all of our communication systems with our customers? I mean, I, I know we can't, we aren't actually going to tell people. I mean, that, how are we managing that part to make sure that our outgoing educate you know communication to uh, folks that might be affected is covered? Right. We won't do a test outbound, but we'll we'll make sure that we can. Uh, communicate like we did last year with with the uh, the website. Is that what you're talking about? Well, last year we did uh, water smart notice it. We did a bunch of stuff to tell to ask people to conserve water. We I mean, we got high praise from lots of people about our our communication efforts. And I just want to make sure that we're, you know, meeting or exceeding that 
that bar uh, this time around if it if it comes to that. Right, right. Yes, we'll do that. And we, we test we use our water smart system nearly every day. So that that is uh, something that we, we use operationally all the time. Okay. Uh, any other questions from board members? Okay. Right. Well, then I think that that does that do it, Clifford, for uh, your one. Qu one question. I'm sorry, Marguerite. Go ahead. Could it? Could we make sure that if and when this happens in our respective wards that we're notified, at least by? I'd like to know my ward if it's going to happen and where it's going to happen. There are bouts and how many customers are impacted. Yeah. yeah, if you could inform us by text or, I mean, uh, in a way that you make sure that we know. Absolutely. We'll, we'll include all the board members uh, that are affected in, in communications. I'm Thank in you. favor of being contacted by text. Yeah, it, it, even if it's just let us know, look in your, check your email right now. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do it by text with a short message to check uh, more detailed okay. information. However, we've indicated we want to be contacted when something important is happening. Okay. Um, I have I no more we're items. We now move on to reports and director comments. Um, item 15, um, the minutes from the September 8th Planning and Legislative Human Resources Committee uh, meetings are included in the agenda packet. Um, we will now receive a report from today's finance and administration committee meeting. And I actually have a question before we go to that. Um, it's my understanding now that we are, since we're doing Zoom for our meetings, will those Zoom meetings be posted on our um, website? This is Risha. The Zoom meetings are being live streamed on the website and the video will be posted to our YouTube, to our YouTube channel. The okay. videos will and be posted to our YouTube channel after okay, so the meeting. Posted... Go ahead. Sorry. It's hard That's to a... hear you. Not a problem. The videos will be posted to our YouTube channel after the meeting. Okay. And then linked on the on the committee or board uh, site for that date. Correct. Okay, great. Um, okay, uh, so we had a finance administration committee meeting this morning. Director Patterson, would you like to report on that yes. meeting, please? Yes, Madam President. Uh, the monthly investment transaction reports uh, were presented uh, by staff and approved for recommendation. Uh, uh, the fiscal year 2021 insurance summary uh, was presented by staff, uh, giving us an update, especially advising us of higher premiums. That too was approved. Um, the equipment lease versus purchase and analysis by Mike Ambrose, that came through loud and clear. Uh, we're still looking at some aspects of it, but overall, uh, we are headed in the right direction. That too was approved by the committee. And lastly, uh, the committee reviewed uh, revisions in district policies. There were four of them. Uh, they were all approved and recommended. Item one and four, the monthly investment transaction report and the review of the revisions were on the consent calendar and approved uh, on the consent calendar today, earlier. Uh, that basically is our report. Great. Um, okay, um, we'll now move on to director comments. Um, I would like to start by uh, asking that we adjourn the meeting in honor of um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, I, I doubt there'll be anybody disagreeing with that. 
Um, I'd like to uh, ask you but it, when at that time. Okay, um, let's let's do that because there may be other board members that wish to um, uh, say something. And then I wanted to say I had my um, virtual ward briefing last Thursday. Um, where I um, decided to invite the public to attend. And while we did not get as many members of the public as I would have liked, we did get a number of people. Um, uh, and um, I thought it was, um, I got some very good, some excellent feedback from folks that participated and um, uh, just had a good meeting with Clifford and Kelly about um, uh, ways that we can um, enhance um, turnout um, by members of the public and also engage uh, people that attend um, in um, you know breakout rooms and other ways to um, make it more like the the the, the real thing. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, are there other board member comments before we go to our adjournment? Yes. I, I, have, I have one uh, related to, I guess, Doug, you and I are coming up on October 1. Uh, we, too, have a... Uh, the Resilient Future of East Bay Mud, a virtual meeting of our two wards. And that will be at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on October 1st. Looking forward to that. Uh, before I get to Green Gainsburg, I, I wanted to ask a question. Is there any update on Gwen, the, our former HR director who passed? This is Risha speaking. I have not received any updates on services or um, any other information after receiving the information of her passing. I can check again with the person who um, let me know that she passed on. I'd like to see that on our uh, agenda for some recognition of Gwen uh, and her passing, if that could be whatever is appropriate. Uh, moving to Gainesburg, I, I got a communication from uh, Barbara Lee. Barbara is my friend. She always keeps me in the conversation. Uh, and I'd like to read that into the record. It says, William, today our nation is mourning the loss of a progressive hero, a legal giant, and legendary warrior for democracy. For over three decades, Justice Ginsburg was on the front lines of the fight for gender equality. Without her fierce commitment to justice, the world we live in today would be a lot different for women, people of color, and marginalized communities. Justice Ginsburg was a pioneer for productive rights civil rights, LGBT plus rights, and equal protection under law. She was a shining light of integrity whose strength and commitment was, and still is, an inspiration to us for generations to come. Her brilliance, leadership, conviction, and life's work will live on through us guiding us as we push through our grief to pick up where she left off in the fight for freedom. I am deeply saddened and devastated today. This is truly a loss of our entire nation, for our entire nation. We owe profound debt, a profound debt of gratitude to Justice Ginsburg that, that we may never be able to repay. Yet, we must try. May we carry her tenacity for freedom and equity with us as we strive for a better, brighter tomorrow. My thoughts and prayers go out to her family and loved ones. 
Rest in power, Justice Ginsburg. In solidarity, Robert Lee. Thank you. I doubt you, better Bill. words could be said. Um, Andy had his hand up. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill, for uh, those, those excellent words to remember Justice Ginsburg. Uh, I uh, also just wanted to uh, take a moment to recognize uh, the excellent work uh, pr uh, prepared by our staff and uh, the board committees uh, in sustainability and finance who reviewed our new energy policy. It passed on consent, cal consent calendar today, uh, but it is uh, very significant. Uh, we, we will be, uh, if not the first among the first agencies to uh, set a, uh, a effective goal for reduction of our greenhouse uh, gas footprint to a net zero by 2030. And while uh, there is still some continuing work to be done uh, on this policy to uh, adjust our, our, uh, and, and follow uh, developments in the wastewater uh, uh, inventory and to uh, clarify the quality of carbon uh, offsets that can be procured, uh, we, you know, we, are, we are saying that we, we need to save our planet. We need to uh, 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 stop the, the catastrophic effects of global climate change and we have set a policy uh, to uh, do our part in leading that effort. Thank you for raising that, uh, singling that out, Andy. Um, it's an important, an important step. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that too, Andy. I, I was thinking of saying a comment, but I didn't want to run over the uh, <clears throat> the consent calendar at the time, and so you could have pulled the, the item; thing. it would have been fine. Yeah, that's okay, buddy. <laughs> I, uh, I I agree with Andy. I think it's a it's an important step uh, for East Bay Mud, an important um, uh, standard that I think we're setting for other water agencies to take the lead on this uh, particular issue and to make 2030 uh, a, a goal. I don't know of any others that have have made that type of goal, uh, but I hope many will follow in suit. It's not something that we can um, wait any longer to take as aggressive action as possible on. All right. And um, along with that, um, I would just direct our staff to um, uh, blow our horn, but um, maybe um, play our pipe. Uh, we could be a little bit of the Pied Piper and getting other um, water agencies to uh, follow our lead. That would be um, excellent. This is actually that uh, it's New York climate. If this were, I think this if this were. Um, non-COVID times. Um, this week would have been a, a, a large week of action on climate. Um, the New York Climate Week is still happening in a virtual uh, way. There's actually a big summit happening today. Um, and uh, so it's, it's very appropriate that we approve this policy uh, this week. All right, With, go, go ahead, Frank. I said, especially with Texas getting its third dose of a hurricane. Yeah. Uh, um, yep. Um, okay. Well, without uh, further comment, um, we will adjourn in honor of uh, Supreme Court Justice um, and uh, Bill's Bill's words uh, communicated from Barbara Lee could not have said it better. Um, a giant in. Um, the forward progress of our country uh, on yep. the, the the long arc of justice um, and um, rest in power, Justice Ginsburg. Okay, uh, we are adjourned uh, till uh, October eighth. Uh, no, October. What's the date? Risha, help me out. October thirteenth. October thirteenth. We have a wow. long, we have a long, we have a three week break. This, this Yay. Stuff. Okay. Thank you Thank guys. You. Thank, Thank you. you all.